Guten Tag, Herr Smith here with a little bit of German class. Uh, one of the things that uh, we really want to learn about is a bunch of famous people. There are so many famous people who come from German-speaking countries or who were otherwise German-speaking people. Um, and of course that includes more than Germany. Uh, that includes Austria, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Liechtenstein. It even includes parts of border regions. Uh, German-speaking areas inside the Czech Republic, inside Belgium, Holland, France, Poland. Uh, there's lots and lots of German-speaking areas, and there's all kinds of people, musicians, scientists, writers, etc., 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 and we want to learn about some of them. So today we're going to talk about somebody who came from Austria, one of our favorite German-speaking countries. Here we go. Georg Trakl. So first thing we got to do is pronounce this mess. Georg is the first name. Give me a hard G sound. G, G, Georg. There's no E on the end. This is not George. This is Georg. Last name Trockel. All right, that's fun to say with a K and an L together. Georg Trockel. Who is this guy? Uh, he was born in the city of Salzburg in Austria. Uh, his house that he spent his childhood in and the first uh, 18 to 20 years of his life growing up, the house is still standing there. Um, you can go see it. It's a tourist spot. Um, very intense young man, Mr. Trockel. Uh, you know, if you look at the photograph, he is not kidding around. Uh, so what makes him tick? What's part of his identity? Um, Austria, as you may know, is a majority Catholic country uh, at the time that uh, Trakl was living, even more so. He was born in the late 1800s, and the country was about 99% Roman Catholic. Um, he was not, however. Uh, his family was evangelisch. Um, you would translate that perhaps as uh, Protestant or Lutheran, something like that. So he was a minority individual in his uh, society, in his culture. Uh, everybody around him was Catholic, the schools were Catholic, everything else, but he was not. So he had his uh, own religious faith uh, that made him a little bit different than others. Um, he grew up with mom and dad and some siblings. Um, Kind of a tough childhood. The mom died early. Uh, the dad was kind of a business guy who was busy with his work and didn't have that much time for the kids. Uh, he was raised, and his siblings, brothers and sisters, were raised mainly by a hired nanny who turned out to be uh, Roman Catholic and French, and she's there to raise these Protestant Austrian children. So that was kind of weird. Uh, so he has a lot of questions about identity. Uh, grows up, time to get a job. He becomes an apotheker. That will be his profession, his beruf. Apotheker is a pharmacist. Uh, so he is uh, working in the drugstore, mixing up medicine and pills. A uh, little bit of a problem there because he likes to dip into the cocaine on his own. And cocaine was back in the day. It was actually sold in drugstores as a medicine. So he kind of helped himself on the side. And, uh, you know, don't, don't, what's the rap song? Don't dig out of your own supply. He got himself into a little bit of a habit there that kind of was difficult to break. Um, he takes off from Salzburg and moves to Vienna, lives in the city of Vienna for a couple of years, attends the famous university there, um, gets acquainted with some other prominent people of his era. He knew a bunch of famous people who were super smart and uh, literary and so forth. Um, about this time is when his uh, real career begins to emerge as a poet, uh, the pharmacy stuff was just a way to uh, earn a living and get his hands on some free drugs, but his main occupation is going to be writing poetry, and uh, he is uh, going to be developing his style. He's going to go through different phases. He gets to know some other poets. They compare notes. He publishes a few things, yada, yada, yada. Um, along comes uh, World War One, and uh, as a individual in the medical industry, uh, the healthcare field, he's going to be uh, drafted into the army and he's going to work as a medic, as somebody who is uh, going to be 
part of the military healthcare system. Uh, here's a whole bunch of big vocabulary words that all have to do with uh, being a medic in the army. Uh, Militär Medikamentenbeamter, Militär Apotheker, Sanitätsoffizier, Sanitätsleutnant, Sanitator. Okay, all different ideas about being a medic in the military. Um, there he is with his little uniform on, kind of a strange thing, but this is around the time of World War I, and uh, he is going to be drafted, sent into combat. He's going to suffer massive psychological trauma. Uh, he is overwhelmed by the level of destruction he sees. Uh, World War I was way more violent than any war previous to it, and as a medic, someone who's there to care for the wounded soldiers, uh, instead of having a few guys here and there who maybe got stab wounds from a sword or received a single shot, he's going to be faced with dozens and dozens and dozens of guys who've been hit with machine gun fire and hand grenades. Uh, so there's many more wounded people, and they're more seriously wounded, and there's way too few medics to take care of them all. So he's totally overwhelmed. Uh, he's trying to take care of way more people than he could possibly take care of, and their wounds are worse than uh, would have been thought possible. He himself is going to die very early in the war, uh, 1914. The war began in August 1914. Sadly, by November of 1914, Georg Trockel himself is dead. Uh, look at the years on this uh, uh, monument, 1887, 1914, that's telling me he lived to be about 27 years old. A very short life, a very tragically short life, and yet a life which uh, produced some great poetry that we continue to study to this day. Vocabulary word, expressionism, all right, in German, expressionismus, as the uh, field of poetry, the style of poetry, the movement of poetry uh, that Trockel was a part of, and to say that he was a part of it is a little bit of an understatement. He was a leader. He was one of the uh, prime examples of expressionist poetry. Uh, expressionism is an artistic movement that also included painting, motion pictures, sculptures, right? So it, it, was, a, it was a whole genre of art that covered different artistic disciplines. Um, Trockel's poetry was very avant-garde, very cutting edge for its day. Um, he started, his earliest poems were written with very traditional rhyme schemes and meters in terms of the numbers of syllables per line, etc. But he quickly moved into a much uh, more uh, modern, postmodern kind of poetry style. And so we see here a couple of examples. The first one, Kindheit, all right, childhood. Um, don't worry about what it means right now. Uh, let's just listen to how it sounds. Voll Früchten der Holunder, ruhig wohnte die Kindheit, in blauer Hölle, über vergangenen Pfad, wo nun bräunlich das wilde Gras saust, sind das stille Geäst, das Rauschen des Laubs. Again, right now, don't worry about what it means, the sound is a big part of his poetry. Here's another song, Stundenlied, the song of the hours. Um, listen up. Mit dunklen Blicken sehen sich die Liebenden an, die blonden Strahlenden. In starrender Finsternis umschlingen schmächtig sich die sehnenden Arme. All right, just beautiful sounds. Uh, his language is very complex. His concepts are very complex. Not stuff for uh, beginning German students to, to uh, try to sort out. Uh, but anybody can still enjoy the sound. All right.
Yeah, so that was the life of Georg Trockel. A um, few bullet points to think about in retrospect. Number one, expressionism, a whole big movement of art, uh, poetry, painting, sculpture, film, all the rest of that. He was a leader in the expressionist movement. Uh, secondly, Austrian, not German. Uh, thirdly, uh, just a powerful influence in terms of shaping concepts of poetry for future generations of poets. A tragically short life, uh, but uh, it's worth reading his poetry. But even more important than reading his poetry is, of course, hearing his poetry. Because poetry is meant to be heard as much as read, or sometimes even more. All right. Talk to you later. Tschüss.